Let me simplify why sin is bad in the eyes of God. I know a lot of people when they see Christianity or the scriptures or the Bible, they're like, oh my God, like that is just a whole bunch of rules. That is so many commandments. And then they self-reflect and the enemy will condemn them. Like you are not worthy. The enemy will try to keep their heads low. Listen, there is no condemnation in Christ. And he wants to reel in absolutely everybody. People who are doing the craziest thing, he wants to reel them in. Heaven rejoices when a sinner is saved. And people have sin completely backwards. In the scriptures, it says that we have to train righteousness. And there's a sanctification process where you change over time, where God will change you, mold you through the furnace of affliction, trials, tests, all of these different things. And you will start to love God because you believe in God. You believe that he's real and you just dig in deeper to where you don't even want to do those things because you prefer the relationship because he is good. He is just, he is faithful. And you start to trust him as you dig in deeper. But a lot of people have sinned backwards because religion loves to push that fear of you're going to go to hell because they want people to be saved, but they use a different approach. But sin is bad in the eyes of God because sin separates you from God. Therefore, you cannot have a relationship. You can't know him. You can't hear from him. And that spiritual longing, that void inside of you that wants that spiritual connection, the enemy will take full advantage of that and he will reel you into his direction with all his counterfeits, whether it's new age, yoga, manifestation, blah, 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 the whole list. But the reason it's bad is because it separates you from God and he wants to have a relationship with you so he can save you whoever the sun sets free is free indeed and also the wages of sin is death it's not physical death it's spiritual death right the more you sin the more you spiritually die so let's just say for example a common one amongst men and also women is lust if you have lustful thoughts lustful desires if you're caught in that addiction masturbating and all of this you feel guilty you feel shameful you feel disgusting you have your head low your spirit is agitated you're in bondage you're in chains you have anxiety you're uncomfortable in public and it leads to spiritual death that is only one one sin. Add another sin that doesn't have guilt, shame, and all of these things, but it has its own attachments to it that are different emotional triggers, different spiritual agitations and corruption. And the more you sin, the more you corrupt your spirit and tie yourself down and chain yourself up to where you're not free. When you turn away from sin, you have a clear conscience where you can feel peace, you can feel love, you can feel joy, you can feel all of these things. But it's not just because, oh, I don't want to sin because I'm going to go to hell. No, it's just, I actually appreciate God and I want to develop this relationship. And it gets to a certain point, you know, whoever the sun sets free is free indeed to where you don't even want to sin. Why would you want to sin? It's just going to fizzle out your relationship with God to where the enemy now has access and you just get attacked by the devil for no odd reason. And then it just messes up your life. So you're like, why would I even want to do that? I'm going with God and I'm not even going to sin because I don't want to sin. And God will take that addiction. God will clean you up when you pray pray on the weaknesses inside of yourself and that's how you see God's strength when you have weaknesses inside of yourself and you see the Holy Spirit you see him patch those areas up and make the weak points inside of yourself strong to where you become reliant dependent you need to come back. Anyways, so that's the simplified version of sin. I know myself on my walk, I feel like a pressurized can, like, God, I'm trying to be perfect, and, you know, the enemy's attacking. It feels like I'm being attacked by absolutely everything, but I gotta keep a smile, I gotta keep joy, and, you know, you're going through the furnace. Sometimes you just explode, and then you realize, like, listen, God knows where I'm at. God knows the path I'm on. And in the scriptures, it says that you practice righteousness, right? You're not gonna jump into the Bible and just be sin free. No, it's a sanctification process, a lifelong journey of just cleaning up parts slowly at your own pace, at your own pace, right? You could take a meth head and he's gonna have his own sanctification process if he starts to pray or a prostitute or whatever. It doesn't matter how far in the darkness you are. God doesn't want you in that kingdom. He wants to pull you out. It doesn't matter who it is because he loves his people so anyways simplified why sin is bad in the eyes of god it's not because he is holy he is just and if you're a sinner he despises you and you're just a flea in his eyes it's not that at all it's because he wants a relationship and he wants to save you from bondage and then once you are freed up and once you're saved you can start doing what he wants you to do